sell or be sold. You know, everybody is selling all the time, whether you realize it or not. You're selling your attitude. You're selling your beliefs. You're selling how you feel about things. You're selling just by you being in a room without saying anything. Your demeanor, the way you carry yourself is having impact and influence on everybody around. Now, the question is, what is it doing? And are you bringing influence to that room? Or is that room, is that person in front of you across the table, are they influencing you? I heard a sales manager once at a car dealership uh, when he was training his salespeople said, every deal, every client you come in contact with, there is a sale that's going to be made. The only question is, are you going to sell that car or are they going to tell you why they can't buy that car? You know, and no matter what you are in life, that's the way it works. You you are considering decisions every day and you're making a buying decision. Should I go eat here? Should I go eat here? Should I buy this for Christmas or should I buy this? Should I marry this person or should I marry this person? Should I date this person or not? What should I do about this? Everything in life is a decision and whether there's a decision has to be made, whether there's choices that have to be made, a sale has to be made. And the question is, are you going to sell Are you going to be sold? So I want to give you three things to consider, and I really do, and I hope, and I pray that this will help you grow your business, that will help you make more sales, these three principles, and more importantly, bring a better experience in your own personal life as well. Because knowing these three things, I honestly believe, will help you be more intentional in your day-to-day choice-making, decision-making, and the way you carry yourself. So sell or be sold. Number one, you are your first client. You know, Paul says there in Romans 8, 38, for I am persuaded. As a matter of fact, let me just read it to you. I hate quote, misquoting scripture when it comes to that. He says, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from God in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, Paul was a theologian of theologians. He was Hebrew among Hebrews. He, he sort of knew his stuff. And at one point, he was sold in a different direction. He was pulling for a different team. Matter of fact, he was persecuting the people that with his newfound religion called Christianity. And uh, he had to, those type of people, I love them because once they're sold out, boom, they're in one direction. And you can't convince them otherwise. So it took you know, a bright light. It took being knocked off a horse. It took an encounter to change, to repent. The word, the biblical term, term is repent, to turn. But it took something major to get him refocused from, no, that's the wrong product I ought to be selling. This is the right product I ought to be selling. Because at the end of the day, he was just there. He was a zealot for truth, and he misunderstood what truth was. And so he got a radical change in his idea and his thoughts. But see, here's the point. You know, I'm not trying to, to, to preach to you today, but there is a, there's a deep psychological truth here that you are your first client. And once you buy into something, well, it's pretty darn easy to sell it. See, the reason why I find it very easy to sell opportunity, the reason why I can trumpet entrepreneurialism is because, well, for I am persuaded that neither an employer a pontificate, a pundit, or some politician is going to care more for Terry Wilson in his career than Terry Wilson himself will. And so I've tasted and I've seen that entrepreneurialism is good. Yes, it's fraught with challenges. Yes, it's not easy. But here's the dirty little secret. Neither is employment. Are you telling me you like those long commutes to work, that you like going like some sort of pauper, like some sort of slave and say, oh, Mr. Boss, can I have time off? I got to take little Johnny to the dentist. Do you enjoy that? Do you like having yourself to be yielded and surrendered to someone else that's no better than you? It's not that you're trying to put them down with your hat in hand and saying, hey, and justify why you want time off, justify why you want a vacation, justify why you need more money. I'm sorry. No, I don't. And so I am persuaded that I would rather take the sleepless nights at sometimes the learning a different market, learning a different product, learning a different strategy. I would take the stress of having to learn and do different than I would take the demoralizing, demeaning, uh, ad, you know, life of having to ask someone else what my value and time is worth. 
See, so if I'm to say, I'm sold out. So it's very easy for me, and I've heard every excuse, I've heard every rationale, I've heard every every complaint about why well, entrepreneurialism is dead. Really? I just had a client last week make $54,000 in one week. Well, it's hard to sell opportunity and online in the market. It's flooded. Well, I just had a client last week just selling TW3 made over $8,000. Well, the economy is bad right now. You see what's going on in the housing market and the job market and blah, 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 blah. Did you just hear me? Last week in 2021 of December, we're on this is what, December 5th, December 6th? Not even a week in? And people making eight and fifty grand? Come on. As some as some politician would say, come on, man. The point is this. If I can do it, you can do it. See, I'm sold. Well, Terry, it's just it's easy for you because of whatever fill in the blank. Well, I'm a College dropout. I went to college for two weeks. I was taking public speaking and badminton. I couldn't hang. Uh, I come from the ninth poorest county at the time, the ninth poorest county in the United States, not in the state, in the United States, not just in North Carolina, in the United States, the ninth poorest county in the United States. Well, you must come from some affluent family. I come from a single mom in a very rural and poor area. See, the point is this, I'm not here, you know, singing blues and, and all this other stuff. I was loved. I had a great mom. I had a great family. I had a great church. You know, I, I am God's favorite son. You know, I have the favorite God on my life. I, I make no complaints, but I say this, I have no advantage that no one else I feel like would have. And if I, with, with my background, understandings, and some of the things I'm not even revealing in public because it's not worth public consumption, but I could tell you things that would curl your ears about my background, some, some, some very heavy stuff. But see, here's the point. Everybody's been touched by life. No one gets out of this thing alive. So I am persuaded that if I can, you can. So I, when people come to me, well, this is just one of those pie in the sky... Okay, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about me? You see, I'm going to sell. I'm not going to be sold. Now, they might not buy it. They might still be in their own head. They might still be, and, and they can justify and rationalize their way to bankruptcy if they want and having the most miserable experience they want ever in life. If they don't want to hear that you can do more, you are worth more, and you have been equipped by your God to experience, earn, and enjoy as much as you want out of this life. There's a story in the New Testament talking about the, the man who, who was leaving town and he gave out talents. He gave one five, he gave one three, and he gave one one, and he came back. And the one, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a passage in there that's pretty heavy for a lot of people. But here's the point. Every single one of us has been given something from birth. My question is, what are you going to do with it? I feel like I was someone that only was given one talent. Only one thing, I didn't come from an affluent family. I didn't come from, you know, uh, money. I didn't come from, you know, high education. I didn't come from all of these different advantages. And I'm most, most people are like that. You are more than likely like that. The question is, what are you going to do with it? So here again, what am I doing right now? I'm selling entrepreneurialism. I'm selling opportunity. Now, whether it be TW3 or you go, you do your own thing or whatever, all I'm telling you is whatever you want out of life, you can have if you will decide what I have in my hand is not worth as much as what I want over here. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to get around the people that is going to help me get there. I'm going to get the tools, the training, the technology that I need to get from point A to point B. Because that's when a sale is made. Everybody gets, they miss the fire. What is selling? What is a sale? A sale is nothing more than this. And this is how I sell myself, Terry. You're overweight. You're unhealthy. You're in your mid-40s and there's a pandemic going on. And now you're on a medication that diminishes your immune system. What are you going to do about it? Well, I... I would like to live longer. I'd like to enjoy my life more. I'd like to be able to do things physically that I used to do that I can't do anymore. I would like to have the energy that I once had when I was playing ball and everything. What I want is worth more than what I currently have. Let's get on the treadmill. And once you're sold and a decision is made, what is the decision? It comes from a Latin word. It means cut away all other options. This is the only option. Then you better kill me to stop me. We're going to go six days a week. So you have to get that mindset. You are your first client. Get sold on whatever it is you're selling. Get sold on it. I can sell health and wellness now. 
Why? Because I've tasted and I've seen. I know what it's like to be out of shape. I know what it's like to have low energy. I know what it's like to have all these things. And I know what it's like to be in a better condition now. And I'm telling you, it's worth the pain. It ain't easy, but it's worth it. Number two, sell or be sold. Number two principle you got to consider. Everyone sells, but not everyone prospers. The bottom line is, whether you like it or not, whether you feel like you're a salesperson or not, everyone is a salesperson. There's three things that you're always selling. Your attitude, your beliefs, and your ideas. Your attitudes, your beliefs, and your ideas. Your attitudes, your beliefs, and your ideas. The question is, are you prospering from it? And I would commit to you today, I would challenge you today, that if you're not prospering, then consider, is the attitude I'm selling beneficial to me and others? Are the beliefs that I'm selling beneficial to me or others? Are the ideas that I'm selling beneficial to me or others? Because everyone's selling, but not everyone's prospering. And if you're not prospering, that means you're selling an attitude that doesn't help you nor anyone else. Or you're selling beliefs that doesn't help you or doesn't help anyone else. Or you're selling ideas that doesn't help you or doesn't help everyone else. See, everyone is selling, but not everyone's prospering. So what are you selling? Consider what you've got in inventory. Consider, like Paul had to, you know, this is the direction I've been going, but, you know, I've been pretty miserable, and I'm not prospering the way I should. I'm going to change products. I'm going to change my inventory. I'm going to change the things I'm selling because everyone sells. You don't have to say a word. Your demeanor, your countenance, the way you carry yourself is selling. The question is, are you prospering? So if you're not prospering, consider what you're selling. I'm telling you, everyone is selling. Your attitude, the way you talk to people. Over 13 and a half years I've been with TW3 as, and I, as I established this company. Everyone gets excited. Everyone wants to get into entrepreneurialism. Everyone has the dream, but the hustle sold separate. They get involved, and here's what could happen. They're not convinced internally yet. It's a, it's a head knowledge, but it's not a heart belief that entrepreneurialism is the way to go, that the products, goods, and services I have in my hand are the tools, are the very tools the training technology people need to get them from point A to point B. This is the solution. They're not, it's head knowledge. It's not heart knowledge. And what happens is they get in front of people. They read a script. The words are right, but the attitude, the beliefs, and the ideas aren't congruent. See, I can take a script that you're reading right now if you're a TW3 member, and I'm going to have instant different results than many will. Not because I'm a better speaker. I'm not. I mean, I'm a child of the South and I stumble over my words and those who've read my emails know I have a grammatical challenge to say the least in spelling. But the difference between I would have between most is the belief, the energy, the attitude, the ideas. No one is going to tell me anything about entrepreneurialism, about the tools that I'm going to be offering as a TW3 member. They're not going to sell me on, well, it don't work. It's pie in the sky. This doesn't, I can show them a tax return. I can show them 13 and a half years of results. I can show them other people is doing the same thing. And so I'm so, for I am persuaded, as Paul said, you have to be, number step one, you're your first client, get sold. Number two, make sure if you're not prospering, change those attitudes, change those beliefs, change those ideas because everyone's selling. But if you're not prospering, that's the reason why. Number three and finally, principle, problems or possibilities. What do you see? Do you see problems or do you see possibilities? See, only you can assign meaning. You are the only one that can assign the meaning to what you see right then. A client hangs up on you. A client says no. A client says whatever. My question is, what does it mean? Does it mean you're no good, you're stupid, the products you sell are crazy, blah, blah, blah? Is that the meaning you took from it? Or does it mean, thank you, Lord, for closing that door? Obviously, that is not for me. Obviously, that would have been a headache. Obviously, what meaning do I assign to it? Only you, only I can assign the meanings of things I perceive. Do I see problems? Or I see possibilities. When I read a report that the housing market's going down, or I read a report that the job market's going down, or I read a report that small businesses are struggling, do I see the problems or do I see the possibilities? See, only I can decide, number two, when I see problems or possibilities, what am I going to offer that? 
am I going to offer solutions or I'm going to offer sympathy? Am I going to come alongside that business owner and say, yeah, man, things are hard. And yeah, it's hard to find good work around here. And yeah, man, nobody wants to work anymore. And yeah, blah, 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 blah. Problems, problems, problems. Here's my sympathy. Here's my sympathy. I say, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about recruiting this way? Have you ever thought about uh, automating this process in your business so you won't be dependent on people? Am I going to offer solutions or am I going to offer sympathy? Only I can decide because do I see problems or do I see possibilities? Third and finally under that, uh, I am the only one that's going to experience the results from the activity I took. See, activity drives results. So you're not picking up the phone. You're not engaged in your business. You're not active in this process because I want to please this coach or I want to do this or I want to please this person. I'm doing it for me. You know, a running joke, I was telling the gym owner of the gym that I go to at Anytime Fitness, his name is uh, Bert Saucier, and I've had him on the show here. I was like, well, Bert, I hope you're happy. I was on the treadmill for an hour and a half today for you. And he just laughed, what? And I said, I got an email about four months ago from a client that says, hey, I've been taking calls, reading this script, and none of this work. I hope you're happy. I've been doing everything, you know. And I was like, well, are you doing it for me or doing it for you? I mean, are you an employee or are you self-employed? You're working for yourself. Why, why, everything in the email read like it was being done for me. And I was like, you do this for you. And if you are not happy with what you are earning, enjoying, or experiencing, then you need to make a decision to change this, modify this, or do this. It's about you. See, only I am going to experience the results from the activity I engaged. So do I see problems or do I see possibilities? Three things, if you want to sell or be sold, you're the first client, get yourself sold. Everyone sells, but not everyone prospers. And do I see problems or do I see possibilities? I hope this helps. 